We do, we're at 148. We do dollar again, which we just did the Mechaber in the Ramoh. Nogi Mechol Mokom Maharbas Neres Botikini Yos Latsi Begodim Noim Beis Akneses. There's the minig in all communities that we increase the number of candles in the Botikini Sios where we daven. Latsi Begodim Noim Beis Akneses. And we spread cloths, pleasant looking cloths, in shul. Okay, let's see the Mishabur on that first. Nogim Chol Mokom, Darshinon, Lektosh Hashem Mechubod, Zeyom Kippurim, Kevon Shein Lechabdo Bachidu Shtiyo. You're not able to honor the day with eating and drinking. Shem Kippur, Kabdeo Bechsus Nekiyo. So you wear laundered clothing, clean clothing. Veneros Havigamke Kvoriyom, illuminating the location, that also, that's honoring the day. Why? It's based on the post. We receive al kain buurim kabdo Hashem with lights. With lights, you honor Hashem, illuminating the location. You celebrate targminon the panoshi yakra Hashem. Panoshi usually means a lantern. Me mekabel shavu me mumer laakum shenosin double the sacknesses. We discussed in avodah uh, zorah. Known the churches, you know what do they do with the wax of the burnt down candles? They sell it. So in the old days, nothing was nothing was wasted, nothing was thrown out. So let's say they a mumer la a pasta he converted out of a Jew, converted out, and he wants to give wax to the shul. Are you permitted to use that wax in the shul to illuminate the shul? You shouldn't. Shnosim dovel beisaknesses. Let's say there's a concern, you're going to antagonize the man by not using his wax. Or let's say he's a minister. He's a minister, so he can really create problems. This is not simple, because using the shul is a disgrace. To use this wax to honor Hashem, which comes from such a source. Once you discuss that this is like even though on a personal level it, it's permitted to use, it's permitted, but to use for something of kedusha, this is a disgrace. You don't want there's, there's, there's a there's a haloch in Yoradeo. They had a barrel of oil and they found a rat in the barrel, and the barrel and the rat was soaking for more than 24 hours. So there's the principle of kavish kemavushal. Something which marinates for more than 24 hours, it's the equivalent of cooking. So that means the rat has been absorbed into the oil. So, so are you permitted to eat the oil? Right. Who would eat it? But that's not Shiloh. Are you permitted? So over there, the halacha is, it d- differentiates between a country mouse and a city mouse. One is Nosen Tam Lishvach, one is Nosen Tam Lishvach. One enhances the oil, one is... Uh, one putrefies it, right? Country country mouse mouse is not doesn't putrefy it. The city mouse putrefies it. Okay, must be a ghetto mouse. Okay. <laughs> so over there, there's discussion. What happens if you have shishim? Some machlok the shach and taz. If you have sixty to one, more than sixty. To use it for a dove of kedusha. To use it, you want to use the oil to illuminate the shul. Is it appropriate? So the shah says, even though on a personal level you permit it to eat the oil, but to use it in the shul for a dove of kedusha for a mitzvah, it's a disgrace. Would you? If you have nothing else, he says you shouldn't use it. You shouldn't use it. There's the pasuk. No, no, you have shishim right. so because there's a posuk would you bring this to your prince if you had a prince would you give it to a prince I mean it's not good enough for the prince but it's good enough for God it's kosher it's kosher, it's kosher. Yeah. but it's inappropriate it's not, so therefore you don't so not because it's, in the, it's not appropriate you know do you know what goes on the, in, the, in, the, in the kitchen at a restaurant it fell on the floor, picked it up, put it back on the plate, okay. <laughs> you know, what you don't know, you won't hurt you, okay? Maybe that's for the customer, or whatever, God. So it's something else. Yeah. 
government what is intrusion that would be okay yeah, we're talking about something which is putrid I'm not talking about kosher non kosher this is this of course it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a rodent we're not talking about we're talking about it's a rodent Okay. Right. Look, you know, according to government standards, if it's less than two percent, you could have uh, dr uh, rodent droppings, and you could have larvae. It's okay. They serve it on in the White House, right? That with grits and chits and whatever else they call it over there. Okay. Of course, in, in Honolulu, that's what they serve for, for breakfast. You get phosphorus that oil, and it was less than six. You would be able to use it in shul. It's not a kosher that's what it is, that's about no. Well, it's your bags and you're coming and, and you have the shishim. You'll be able to use that oil. No, because it's not possible cholov. It's not bitl. That's not, it's not, it's not possible cholov. That's not possible cholov. If it's shishim. Okay. Shekolish. Okay, let's see the, the ram oh, now. Hagov and Ogin, shekolish, godol, shekin. What about if it's a kosher animal? So what's wrong with a kosher animal? Instead of a rodent. What about if it would be a piece of not kosher meat? The machaber is being specifically a rodent. We're not talking about not kosher piece of meat. Let's say it was nevelo, right? Meat that wasn't ritually slaughtered. Seems to me that wouldn't be a question. That would not be. A <coughs> over, no, which means there you'd be you'd be permitted to use it. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. It was disgusting. It happened to be speaking about the rat. Because it could be something that you wouldn't eat for yourself. You wouldn't eat yourself. Let's say it's less than shishim. Do you give it to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Even though it's not an eating issue. Look, cannibals ate people. Okay. Because you grasshopper, look, the king of Morocco invites uh, Svartan to eat grasshoppers with him. And there's a Yemenite in the neighborhood, he invites him also. Okay, let's see the Ramo. Okay, we don't want to. We don't want to get into the uh, hello to the cuisine of Englewood now, right? Okay, grass up in the soup. Okay, hago. There's a minog that every adult, male, and child they light a candle for him. Gam ner neshama la'oviv li'imo shemesu. In addition, the yartzeit light for a parent's father or mother who passed away, b'chei nochon that's proper. B'chei nochon to light a yartzeit, you know. Today, what does it cost? At one time, a candle was, was, was a rare commodity. It wasn't easy. It was, it, was, it was an expense. So he's telling you to light in their neshama lo'oviv b'chei nochon it's the right thing to do. Even though it you have to go that extra mile for it. It's the right thing to do. Chein kosvu bixes revoso. No one gamner neshama leovi uli moshe meisu. I mean, the, the minigas we like two. Person, the person didn't have two. You like one and have in mind both. Yart is here. No, we're talking. All these candles are twenty-four hour candles. Now it's in Shkolish, Ve Lazos Neo the Isho. Ein Mogra, the Machaber, the Ramos says, Nogan Shkol Ish Godel. He should say Shkol Godel. What way Ish? He's, he's emphasizing the male aspect. He says, A woman does not, doesn't explain. He says, Ein Mogra Ramatam. O Kotan, Varshavi Nosa Neris El Lonoso. He says, Today the Minigas, we only like candles for a person who's married. Bialka Chof, the Bisalasas, Psilos, Ovos, Vesaknesis. The Alkut says you should make thick wicks for the for the candles, Kedela Harbus Oran, to increase the degree of light. The flame is a larger flame. Absorbs more oil. Love Imo the Chaper Alein. Interesting. You would say lighting the, the yard side light candles. You're commemorating the memory. It's respectful. And what is the concept of lighting yard side lamp? The Chaper Alein. It's Kaporo. Mashalosh Zed the Sagbin Echot. 
says it seems to be from here one candle will be enough for both parents I mean, even though the minute is again today because of our affluence we, we light candles for both you know we're so, we're so affluent today one time in, your t in most houses talking in the 50s 60s if a person had a, a special set of glasses it was for Shabbos during the weekday what was the glass? The glass was the yard site. Was the yard site, right? Today, what's the yard site? A little tin can, which you discard afterwards, because glad, because what? If, you, if, if it's made of beeswax, which you pay four to four dollars or five dollars for one, then it comes in a glass receptacle. But if it's a quarter or three for a dollar, it's a little tin, because we live in an affluent society. We only they only spend money for things that have greater value. You know, little tin, you throw it out. Okay? After say, what the kapora is? What is the kapora? Light. Lighting a candle is a kapora. L'chapir alein. Everybody needs kapora. What do you mean? Nobody's perfect. It's an atonement. L'chapir means the atonement. Now, how, how, L'chapir alein for them. Atoning for them. Chaper alayim. Says shemesu. So what's the kapora? How do, how is lighting a light? How does that mechaper? You give stock and it's a schus. Doing a mitzvah, lighting a light. How does that? How does that? How, what relevance does it have to kapora? But he says chaper alayim. Not sure why it would be a kapora. Not sure. Like somebody said the other day, the question is, is better than the answer. Okay? So we have to try to understand it at another level. I know it's cited in, in Rishonim that <coughs> if you ever go to uh, what they call a tzion, go to a cemetery, people light candles. What's the whole idea of lighting a candle? Well, people light a candle, Lezech Nishmas Ramir Balanes, the people light, light candles. Well, since the Shom is, is a Nair, so therefore the Nair, and it's, it's cited in the Shoni, there's a Nachas Ruach. It, there's, it, it brings a certain degree of pleasure to the person when you light a candle on his behalf. Whatever that means, whatever that pleasure is, there's a Nachas Ruach. That's why uh, let's you have like certain uh, Kvorim, there's always a light burning there. Always, continuous. There's an ongoing Nachas Ruach. But seemingly it's not a kapora. It's not a kapora. And also invited by the, by the person who's buried, he does that somehow against the Nishamus. No, no. Rabbeir Balanes, wherever people light it, the Zechon Nishamus Balanes. Even when you li light a yardside candle, but the right thing is to say you light it, you say, you say, the shame the person who you're lighting it for. You just don't light it without thinking anything. It's better to verbalize it. You, know, you light it with the person's name. You mention the person's name when you light it. Each candle for the mother is the father. Right. Rosh Hashanah, we don't light it. We don't light it. I don't know. It's not. Uh, doesn't. It doesn't give a. Doesn't have a good connotation. It doesn't have a good. You don't. No. That's less for two days. Shabbos, you don't need it. Right. It's two days. So you light two candles. No, so you light one, and when, when usually it burns more than 24 hours, and then you light another one from that light. Okay? Okay? 
if you go to the uh, dollar store, they sell something. It doesn't doesn't have the Mogandover on it. I think it's more than it's a few day candle. Maybe green or blue, whatever color it is. But you can pick up one of those candles there. Okay. Howard just was somewhere. They sell those kind of candles. One of these antique stores. No, you brought it back. Okay. What does it say on the candle? Votive. What is vote? I don't know what the word votive means. It means made in China in, in, in Greek. <laughs> so then definitely you shouldn't use it. That, that definitely not. Because it, then you're acknowledging whatever it, it represents. Yeah, but it, it Definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. Vim kavu neres el v'yom These candles that you would lit, the, the yardside candle of the Ner Neshama, would be extinguished on Yom Kippur. A normal lady yudi shiavs v'yaldikim. You should not tell a Naju to relight the candle. So, Mishra Bura, a normal afilu bremiza. Even if you don't verbalize it, you allude. Umitzah oser kishenecheno kach mechuba. Yeah, the mitzvah is to leave it extinguished. Right? What's covered Shabbos? Person has a he just received as a gift two hundred dollar tie. And he's at the kiddish eats herring or cholent, gets the tie stained. And unless he doctors it with water, the stain's gonna set in. So what's covered Shabbos? Covered Shabbos is to leave the stain. It's covered Shabbos. Covered Yom Kippur is to leave the light extinguished, not to to in any way mentioned to a non Jew or even to a Lutum that the candle has to be relit. He says, the custom is we hire non Jews to watch over the candles, which was not uncommon. Right? Fire could break out. He says, that's where it comes from. Once you have the guy there, like that's that's his area. He's responsible for the candles. So they go out, he relights them, but it, one thing has nothing to another. I mean, you're hiring him to light, but you're not permitted. You tell him in advance, if, it, if the candles should go up, make sure to relight them. He says, you should protest this. You should not allow this. He says, oh, what I want to do on your behalf. Why? He has no benefit. His whole in, 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 interest is to accommodate the Jew. Now, further in Ramah. Mishkova Nero Yom Kippurim. We're talking about the Nero Neshama. The candle went out in Yom Kippur. Yazav Yatlikenu Bimotzi Yom Kippur. It should be relit after Yom Kippur. Val Yechabenu Od Al Yelu Yenechenu Lidlok Ad Gemiro. And you let it burn till it fully burns out. Mishnabura Shazal Likim. Achsha Ola Makpidim in Kovet Nero. Yeah. Very often the person is, is worried. Candle goes out. You say it's, it's a bad, it's a bad sign. If the if the candle is is the neshama, so it has a bad connotation. Chatz uh, v'sholem. He says, and Mishbura says, he says, although people are makpid to relight it, he says, although he, he feels the chavetz chaim, it doesn't indicate anything negative. A person's candle goes out. It does not. It's not, it just went out by itself. Either the wind may have blown it out. He says, you give it to the shamas in shul, you don't have to light this in the house. They lit it in the shuls. You don't even have to know which is your candle. It says, better not to even know which, the, which is your candle. You have a candle. And whatever's left of wax, you leave it to the shul. You donate the wax to the shul, because otherwise you take you take the wax back. It's your candle. You take it back. Okay, let's see the. Uh, so,